Hi guys, I'm Exact Cass and welcome back to another episode of Apple CEO Tips. And today we are going to talk about one of those key topics and that is baggage handling. How do you do baggage handling? Okay, so let's start with your airport and basic terminal layout. So this terminal layout should look pretty familiar to you on some of the other tips videos. But basically, you need a few things in order to do baggage. You need check-in, you need baggage claim, you need baggage bays, um, and then you need all the kind of services that goes along with it. You need some baggage cards, you need some ramp agents, and you need belt loaders and all these kind of things. So let's quickly do the basics. Okay, so uh, in our building, uh, we've said the ground floor is gonna be baggage claim. It's kind of what I've set out over here. So I've got some baggage claim areas over here. These are some shops. And the top floor is going to be check-in. Um, so what we will do is firstly, we need guys to get from the one to the other. So we are gonna wanna grab ourselves the, the escalators. And this is what I love about this game is that you can just leave it in place. Yeah, you can just leave it in place like that actually sure where yeah you can just leave it in place like that and uh, go down and slot it in so there's your escalators now first things first so you want to do some uh, check-in desk so you grab the check-in desk areas over here and you want people so what you want to do is you want to maximize the amount you're gonna load onto your um, onto your on, onto your belt so you kind of do it this way, but you also want to bear in mind that you need room for queuing. So you can't have it up on the wall over here. You need some room for queuing. This is something that takes a fair bit of um, a fair bit of space, right? So we'll slot that in there. We'll make something like that, and you can replicate that all the way through. I'll let it go so the guys can actually start building it. Then you're going to go and grab your belt, um, and let's just go back one more step. When you uh, there's some kind of error message when you want to start baggage handling you go to the economy Okay, so you go to the airport status kind of button down here. You go to this airport um, Airport piece you come into the economy tab and you go to procurement this little purple button over here You go procurement Then you will find firstly you will have baggage handling service and it's pricey I would Think that you would need at least 250 I mean 250 you can see you need 250 I would imagine you need at least 500k before you start researching and implementing baggage handling so bear that in mind don't just go rush straight into it baggage handling is quite pricey it, is, it generates some money but it's quite pricey then after you've done the basic baggage handling there's all kinds of other things that you can research tilt trays bag scanners specific bag scanners and baggage scanning stations and all those kind of things. So there you go. You see you got your um, your little things here. So you build the queue however you see fit. Okay. It's quite easy. You just click the queue button and you leave it. Don't build it like that. Do the snaky thing. <laughs> the snaky thing saves room. Okay. Now, what you then do is you go ahead and you grab the belt. Um, I don't think you get the high speed belt straight away. I think that only comes after the more advanced stuff like tilt trays and so on. Um, so you can just use the standard conveyor belt, but I'm going to use the high speed ones because it's quicker. Okay. So then you want to load it like that. So as you build your check in desks, you um, make sure that there is enough room um, in the middle, in between them, so that you can squeeze a belt in there. That works really well. Then you're going to go here and you can see that that one is uh, one of these, um, what do they call it? A high speed escalator down. Okay, that goes down. So then page down for one step down. Here you can see there's another one going from, from the top to this floor on the ground floor and then down again into the basement. Because I don't want them down here because how am I going to handle it out here with all of this stuff going on? So... I wrap it down another one and uh, and it effectively ends up over here somewhere okay so there you go there's our our thing this area over here is underground 
I have allocated a nice big area in the basement for the baggage handling area. So, with the, um, the advent of the Alpha 32 update, it means we can do multi floors. So I've got a basement basement level, I've got a ground floor, and I've got a first floor. Okay, first floor is check in, ground floor is baggage claim, and basement is baggage handling. Okay, so what you can do is now you've got tunnels and stuff underground, um, and you can effectively put your baggage bay underneath all of this so you don't have to do miles and miles and miles of bags uh, everywhere. Oh, I mean belts belts everywhere you don't have miles and miles and miles of belts everywhere so what you do is you grab um, you grab your uh, baggage bay which is this one okay and then you want to place it in here somewhere um, so you as you see I did the roads all the way around so I could use it pretty much anywhere um, but I want it to be central you want your baggage bays to be as central as possible to your stands so let's quickly have a look where are my stands gonna go my stands are gonna go right here right there uh, all the way up here all the way there all the way all the way all the way here and all the way down there so you can see pretty much everywhere is going to be stands right eventually so you want it central so that's why this strip over here is a very good idea as long as you've got access from everywhere for these guys to come in here and do that um, and drop off the bags and pick up the bags you would be great okay um, yes so now let's have a quick look so I need to kind of slot out some sections of wall here for my baggage handling facility so I'll take out a section there and a little section there and I'll go and grab my baggage um, my baggage bay see that's a hundred K for that thing so as I, as I mentioned you want at least a fair bit of money before you start building these things. The 250 research and then how much how pricey these things are are insane. Um, okay, so there you go. So what I'll do is we will slot it in right over there. That's a baggage bay right over there. Now, you would also want to do service roads so that these guys can actually get access to it. So you just do take the standard service road over there and you click in there and there and there you go now the next piece of the puzzle is for us to come along and um, and insert our belts okay so we'll go I'm still going with the high speed stuff even though you can use the normal ones if you don't have the high speed stuff so I'll go up here uh, make my way in that direction okay something like this and run it up to I believe it's entering somewhere over here so that's the thing then on the other hand you also want to kind of get them out somewhere and this is where you want to do some planning don't want to crisscross your belts because that doesn't work you'll have to go up another level and down a level or use a lot of tilt rays or something like that so just make sure that you plan this out if you want to do multiple bag baggage bays plan out get yourself some space and do um, do plan out your belts uh, why is this doing all the funny directions over here up to there and then all of a sudden this doesn't work anyway we'll have a look at that now so and now with the new multi-floor thing one of the cool things you can do is you can pretty much have your baggage bay right underneath your carousel so what I'm going to do is over here, I'm going to take it out there. I'm going to run it a little bit this way and I will go uh, up somewhere over here somewhere. So let's go and grab us the, come on, the escalator, high speed escalator up and we'll see where this thing kind of pops out. Okay, um, I am thinking over there is a good idea. So as you can see, I've done a little bit of planning. So I can pop it up over there. Okay, so there you go. That's our escalator. We'll get our belts to go all the way to the escalator up there. Then we go to the, uh, the baggage uh, carousel or the claim. So now you just want to do something funny. So over here, I always use the standard conveyors just so to make sure my passengers can actually take their belts, their bags off the belt and it doesn't kind of uh, run by them too quickly. So I do a little something like this. And as you can see, I've zoned staff zone at the bottom of that. Um, and that is kind of a pro tip for you. If you don't want the passengers to be standing on top of your belt, 
in a kind of unrealistic manner, use the staff zone and make sure you do something like that. So if you use the staff zone in such a way, then uh, only staff will stand on it and passengers won't stand on it. And, and, then, you, uh, and then, then they can still get their bags. So there you go. Now here I've got room for numerous ones of them. And now I've got our baggage claim area over here. So we've got our check-in area, getting our, getting our bags, taking it down, down to the ground floor over here, and then taking it down again, down to the basement. And here you go, loading the baggage bay over there. Okay, the next thing you would want to consider, as you can see, I've got a ton of ramp ages just hanging out over here. And so that's something for you to consider. Uh, ramp agents are required to work here and if you click on it you can say how many ramp agents per side so I can go up and say I want five ramp agents per side to be loading and unloading so if you want this thing to be more effective and so on make sure you uh, ramp up the staff but again take, a, uh, take care of your uh, funding don't just be adding staff if they're not going to be doing anything okay so let's quickly have a look at a setup uh, that is that has been finished okay welcome back to a functioning baggage handling facility so what you can see over here we've got our baggage bay sorting things out you can see I've added a few other baggage bays over here so there's a ton going on um, and you can see there's some additional belts over here so here I've used a tilt tray so the bags and, and we'll go through the journey let's go through the journey and we'll talk about it over there so from our check-in area over here we are taking the bags that are going on the wonderful journey down the belt um, let's see let's follow one let's uh, slow things down and we'll follow one over here there you go we'll go on the wonderful journey of a bag on the belt it's going down there it goes and it goes over here and then it moves away all the way along to our baggage bay so over here we actually see the tilt rays are going to split it to the various baggage bays so it takes the first left over here and it makes its way to this baggage bay where it will be loaded on a baggage car baggage truck uh, apologies so here you can see our ramp agent is going ahead and it is unloading a baggage truck and putting the bags on the belt this was our bag that's arriving over here to be loaded so if we do the same thing and we follow the wonderful journey of the bags up a level here it arrives in the baggage claim over here and the people are not standing on it why because we've zoned it as a staff zone you can see not standing on it but they can still pick up their bags let's wait until someone picks up one of these bags this guy is eyeing it, is eyeing it. This guy is coming after it. No, no, it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to. This guy might be picking up something. That guy, oh yeah, this guy just picked up one. That guy is going to pick up something. I'm sure he is. This one maybe two. Over there, oh, he just picked up that one. Maybe this guy is going to pick up this uh, nice pink purple one. He did, there he goes. So there you go. Um, okay, so this is going quite along smoothly. To be honest, I have... I found that you can do a lot of stands from a baggage bay and maybe in a future update what they will do is they will actually limit the amount that you can do because these things just kind of double load all of these things there's like tons of bags over here and we're waiting for the baggage trucks to come and collect it okay so quickly a word on tilt rays tilt rays are pretty amazing in the sense that they uh, miraculously know where these things want to go and what uh, so again just as you would do with the um, with the airline path nodes you would right click on it and it would say what does this tilt tray do it sends it to the destination there's also options like forward and left which i don't quite know what it does forward and right or left and right so i don't i don't, I don't quite know why you would have it go either forward and left forward and right or left and right I have no idea why you would do any of that. Let's click it and see. Forward and left. Oh, let's see what the next one does. So I don't know why you would do that. If you can just route everything to its destination all the time. Okay, so one forward, one left, one forward, one left. So I, there's probably situations where you want to use that. 
but for some reason I think all of them should just be going straight away to their destinations okay so I wouldn't know why you would do that let's get rid of this thing uh, and a bit of a pro tip if you do find yourself with bags everywhere you can click the bag and say remove it it works quite well okay so there you go that is how that setup works now there's a few other things that you need to consider when you are doing the baggage handling the one thing is you actually have to connect your check-in desks to a baggage bay so if you click that you click the connect or reconnect in this case it is need you i need to connect it um, let's take this closed one for instance i want to connect the baggage bay i go downstairs to my baggage bay and i click it so now all bags from that chicken desk will come to this baggage bay which is quite an interesting one because you also have to connect the baggage bay to stands so you can in such a way actually indicate which of your chicken desks are going to be for which areas of your airport so the next thing you want to do is you want to take your uh, your stand and you will want to say connect your baggage bay so again uh, while if I'll end in flight okay in this let's try this one and say connect your baggage bay okay you can see it's connected to a, a ton of other things as well over here check uh, security and all other kind of things so what you do is you come over here and you go ahead and you connect it okay this one is connected over there okay so be mindful and do remember to always always connect your stands and your uh, check-in desks to a baggage bay there is also the ability to do um, you also want to connect your uh, baggage claim to it right over there like so so your baggage claim also so in this case i've connected this one to the one below it this one to the one below it, this one to the one below it and this one to the one below it and potentially there is a situation where your tilt trays will be working in that kind of way again as you can see i've got my ramp agents all in a staff room over here you can see the contractors are hanging out over here as well but they're all in a, in this piece over here um so that they're close by so that they can quickly change shifts and all these kind of things okay now let's follow this baggage car to see where it is headed okay um it is going okay well let's uh, speed things up a little bit Okay, and we'll follow this guy. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There it goes. Uh, 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 a lag. It's a lag. It's going. It's going. It's going. It's coming to this stand over here. Now, let's slow down and see what happens on the wonderful journey of bags. Okay, so it arrives. The ramp agents that are still on the stand is going to load them back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, same thing with unload. Unload does exactly the same thing. What's happening over here? These have not been unloaded. They're waiting for ramp agents. So again, you want your ramp agents to be close by so that you don't lose efficiency. Here we are losing efficiency because the baggage trucks are hanging out without ramp agents. And so it's not being unloaded. Okay. The other thing that I want to show you is over here. And it's quite lucky it's happening right now. Here you can see this plane is currently being, its baggage, bags are being um unloaded okay bags are being unloaded here comes a belt loader you could also consider belt loaders for the medium planes okay um see unloading still occurring the belt loader is arriving uh, there's some other stuff hanging out here which we will talk about in another tips video but so here you see as this arrives the belt loader and i'm not sure it's going to work this time no it's got you got here too late <laughs> you've got too late buddy you've got too late buddy so now let's uh let's fast forward a little bit the belt loader is hanging out here because it's waiting for a loading to occur as well maybe there's a belt loader that'll come up here these guys are loading by hand oh here comes a belt loader okay we'll see if it'll make make it in time come on what's with the lag maybe the build's not as stable and I pause. I paused it actually. There you go. Now, hang on, hang on. Let's slow this down quite a fair bit. Now you can see they just kind of they don't even walk anymore. It just loads almost automatically. There should be something over there that is telling us it almost just loads automatically. You can see the kind of numbers flashing, um, but you can't actually see the animation. So it loads much quicker if you've got a belt loader. So belt loader equals quicker loading and unloading of medium-sized planes. Again, belt loader over here 
instead of walking they're now just gonna do, 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 arrive there okay now same thing on the loading uh, let's slow it down so you can see same thing on the loading you've got um, these things being loaded so the animation is actually working on the loading side but much much quicker uh, than if they are carrying them by hand up and down so you would want to consider a belt loaders if you want a more efficient airport i'm still worried about stuff going on over here we still haven't seen the ramp agents make their way out here but anyway not not what we're talking about in this episode so how many vehicles do you need when you are doing these kind of things so i do a quick check of my stands so you can see i've got tons and tons of stands but i only i'm only interested in in the kind of the um the medium stands for belt loader so i typically have about four planes um, being loaded or unloaded at the same time due to my number of stands so easy calculation would be to do four but depending on how exactly you schedule these things you probably would maybe add an um you know you could add one or you could you, you maybe don't need four of them at the same time because this guy is loaded unloaded then that one can go and load or unload one of these ones because there's no need for one in this slot so it really depends on how you schedule it simple math is just saying that okay, i've got four stands so four belt loaders easy easy but that maybe not be efficient three might work for an arrangement like this where i've got a ton of open space but if you're running them all in one section like something like this if this is kind of looking like your schedule it means you'll be unloading there unloading there unloading there so these two will kind of be unloading at the same time and these two will be unloading at the same time so potentially that means you need uh you know maybe you only need two maybe you need one for these uh you know one for that one and that one and then they can move on to these two but probably three or four depending on how you schedule if you look at um the gap in between flights that is where this will will come in handy the the other one is the baggage cars i would think you would need a little bit more room with baggage cars because they are actually having to travel back and forth to wherever you uh, your baggage bay is so but there is also another tip pro tip make use of the statistics go into the airport um, status panel over here okay the management this is the management panel then you go to operations and you go to vehicle job tasks uh, and now we've got something funny over here that is refreshed okay now as you can see this is the easiest way to understand if you've got enough vehicles or enough um, uh, staff so as you can see belt loaded trucks i've got four there are four jobs and they're all claimed so this one is saying that we've got just enough belt loaded trucks um, in terms of the baggage trucks we well, have got 12 baggage trucks but only six jobs are claimed so we've got a surplus it's probably not a little bit too much so it's worth monitoring this during the busiest time at your airport when you've got the most flights on the ground and you can know that by looking at your statistics okay so what time of the day switch this to hours have a look at what time of the day and why is this being funny this is per every 10 hours can we uh oh hang on let's uh, let's bring this down to okay so let's let's bring this down to like two hour slots or one hour slots okay so here you go one hour slots what part of the day is your busiest time in terms of aircraft so you would have a look that so kind of 1700 1800 so 6 p.m at night um we've got like probably nine planes yeah there we go that goes down to eight and goes down to eight and that's about it so it's pretty standard right so you can have a look at any any given time but so around this time around seven six at night you have a look at what these stats are looking like operations vehicle tasks and you can see what is going on here it's just to know whether you can add or remove some of these vehicles so there you go so that is baggage handling in a nutshell um if you have any questions with regards to baggage handling please ask me ramp agents is the big thing though hang on if you go here and you have an employee task and you have a look and see ramp agents 
you see you need tons so there must be some kind of glitch because there's other stuff not working and i've got plenty but again you would want to look at staff and at vehicles to make sure that you've got enough of all so there you go that is baggage handling and the multi wonderful journey that the bag takes at the airport if you've enjoyed this episode hit that button if you like the tip series please tell me down below in the comments and tell me how you finding baggage handling is there anything around baggage handling that you find um, difficult have you found a system that works quite easily do you know automatically how many vehicles you need is there anything that you'd like to share please do that in the comments down below and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the latest and new stuff okay see you next time bye bye